All right, yo. So today we're gonna be looking at more weird stuff I got. So this right here is wrapped in Chinese newspaper, and that's how you know it's gonna be good. So here we have the AMD Radeon RX 590 GME edition. GME stands for Golden Mouse Edition, and it was a mainly Chinese exclusive graphics card that was mainly sold in the Asian markets, and it's not available in the Western world. And it's a very weird graphics card, but you think by the name of it, it's more closely related to an RX 590. But in reality, it's actually more related to the RX 580 because it has the same chip and process inside. So this uses the 14 nanometer process size, which is similar to that of the RX 580, instead of the RX 590, which uses the 12 nanometer. So what it really is, is the RX 580, but with a different device ID, and also slightly higher clock speeds, but they still market it as an RX 590, albeit the GME edition, which is interesting. So let's go through the specs of this card. So this is the Dataland version, the Dataland AMD RX 590 GME. So I don't know how many of you remember Dataland, but they used to make quite a lot of GPUs for AMD, but it seems like they've dropped off now. They haven't really made any GPUs in like the newer series cards which is interesting, I'm not really sure what happened there. So this card has two 304 stream processors, a base clock of 1257 MHz, a boost clock of 1380 MHz, it has 8GB of GDDR5 memory, and it also has a TDP of 175 watts, which is actually lower than that of the RX 580. So here you can see we have two display ports, two HDMIs, and one DVI. This card is also a very big card, it has a huge heatsink on it, two massive fans, a backplate on the back to keep it straight, and it also has LED lighting at the top, which is nice for a card of this age. So I paid 325 RMB for this card, which is about $45, which is ridiculously cheap, although you will never be able to get it for that price unless you have to pay shipping and stuff, because I bought it in China. All right, so let's test some games. Okay, so in Red Dead Redemption 2, we've got everything set to Ultra 1080p. We've even got MSA 8 set to four times. So we got an average of 20.3 FPS with a 1% low of 16.9 and a 0.1% low of 13.2. And this is actually very good because I really cranked up the settings here. Most of the settings were on Ultra and I even turned on MSA 8 four times. Normally, if you were playing this game just like normally, you would want to get above 30 FPS, and you could do that easily by just turning down some of the settings. But it's still playable, and it looks very good at these high settings with MSAA enabled. Okay, now we've got Forza Horizon 5, and we've got everything on extreme settings in the preset, and we've also got MSAA set to four times. So in Forza, we got an average of 42.4 FPS, a 1% lower of 28.7 and a 0.1% lower of 4.5. There was a bit of stuttering here and there, but nothing too bad. We also did get a couple memory warning issues because there wasn't enough memory, but it seemed to perform okay in the end, so we got a good average FPS. It was definitely more than playable, which is great. And like before, you could turn down the settings and get even more FPS if you wanted to closer to 60 FPS, and it'd be very easily achievable. Okay, so now we've got the classic GTA 5. We've got it on 1080p, we've got MSAA set to times 8 and everything else set to very high, so the highest basically. So in GTA we got an average FPS of 37.8, a 1% low of 24.3 and a 0.1% low of 23.5 FPS. So these 1% and 0.1% lows tell us that the game was pretty stable, didn't really stutter, and it was very playable. And ideally, if you turn down the MSAA settings, you would easily get over 60 FPS on GTA 5, since it is quite an old game now. Okay, so we got Starfield now on the high preset. And we got an average of 29 FPS, with a 1% low of 19 and a 0.1% low of 17.4 FPS. The minimum was 25.5 and the maximum was 31.6, which is very decent, I think, for this game. And there wasn't really any stuttering, which was a surprise, and it's pretty playable in overall. But then the game did crash in the end, so I don't know what was that about. 
Okay, so now we've got an eSports title, Rainbow Six Siege at Ultra Settings, 1080p. We have anti-aliasing set to TAAX4. So in Rainbow Six Siege, we got an average FPS of 64.4 and a 1% low of 59 and a 0.1% low of 57.6. So this was definitely more than playable. It was very easy to play. And it's also very easy to run as it's an eSports title. You expect to get high FPS in this game. If you were playing competitively, you'd probably turn down all the settings to low and you would get a really decent FPS, well over 100. Okay, so now we've got the new CS2 and we've got everything set to about high settings with 4 times MSAA anti-aliasing enabled. And so we got around 108 FPS in Counter Strike 2, which is very playable and very good. And like Rainbow Six Siege, you've probably turned down these settings if you're playing competitively. So in 3D Mark we got a graphics score of 4491, which is pretty decent I think. And it also gives some estimated performance in games like Battlefield 5, uh, 4040p Ultra with 50 plus FPS. It also correctly recognises the graphics card as an RX 590GME. But I'm not sure it is actually an RX 590GME. So if we take a look in the AMD software we can see it correctly says RX 590GME. We can see here it says AMD Radeon RX 590 GME. We can see it has 2304 unified shaders. And everything looks correct here, but that's based on the BIOS. And we can see the sub vendor data land. But weirdly enough, if we could look up here. So as you can see, we get taken to this page which says it's an RX 580 2048 SP. Which, I don't know if it's correct or not, but we can find out later if this is actually a fake graphics card. Because this is not supposed to be a 2048 SP RX 580. It's supposed to be the RX 590 GME, or at least the RX 580 2304 uh, SP. So as you saw from before, this came up as a 2048 580, which is interesting because it's not supposed to be and that was when we looked it up on GPUC. So in order to find out what's really in this card we're gonna have to open it up. I can imagine that it should come up possibly as a 2304 SP 580 but the fact that it showed a 2048 SP is definitely interesting because that means they really messed with the BIOS because this is supposed to be a card with 2304 stream processors. Okay, so let's pop this open. It looks like there are these five screws here, and there's also these four screws over here that we need to unscrew to get it open. Another screw here, and this that. Okay, so there we go, we got it opened. And now let's look for the code. So, on the bottom, of these chips that usually says a code that you can look up. So let's find it. So there we go. If I hold it still, if I hold it still, we can see the code 2150910038. So let's look that up. So after searching this up, we can see that this corresponds to the AMD Radeon RX 580 2304 SP version which is interesting because I'm not even sure if this is the GME version or not because on one hand I know that they do use the same uh, chip they use the same process here as the 14 nanometer in both of the GME edition and the the 580 but there is a code number for the AMD Radeon RX 590 GME which is not the same as this one so I'm not 100% sure but anyway, leave a comment and a like and say what you think this is really. If you think this is the GME edition, let me know. Or if you know, have any ideas, let me know. Or if you think I got scammed and you want to call me an idiot, then also leave a comment. Thanks. The sticker over here also says AMD uh, RX 590 GME 8GX. But obviously that doesn't mean anything. Like Anyone could have just stuck some random shit on here and it would have passed through anyway. It's also got the serial number there, so maybe someone can tell me what this really is. Okay, so I've got an RX 580 2048 SP here, 
and I'm going to do some comparisons to see if uh, we can tell what the real card is, because ideally the 590 GME should be faster than this one, uh, but we'll see. It isn't the 2304 SP the version though, so it might affect it a little bit, but we'll find out. So in Red Dead Redemption 2, on the RX 580, we got an average of 80.2 FPS, a 1% low of 13, and a 0.1% low of 11.3. So these are definitely lower than the other graphics card that we tested. But obviously that could be due to overclocking differences and stuff like that. We have the settings on the exactly the same as the other tests we ran. Alright, so Forza 5 on the RX 580-2488SP, we got it on exactly the same settings as before, and in this we got an average of 32.7, a 1% low of 1 and a 0.1% low of 1. So this definitely was more stuttering in this gameplay. So I'm pretty sure this is lower than before, but we can ch test this out after we draw the graphs. Okay, so here we can see the graphs for Red Dead Redemption 2 and Forza. So as we can see, the 2048 SP580 performed worse in both games, but it performed uh, by a bigger difference in Forza compared to Red Dead Redemption 2. But these values of difference may be achievable by overclocking, so it's, it's hard to say if the 590 GME actually is the GME or not. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, thanks.